All right, so 2008's paper for buffer, buffers and pH, right? Number five, a buffer solution. Well, buffer solutions are prepared by mixing a weak acid or a weak base with a, sol with a salt of that acid or base. Okay. A buffer solution is prepared using 0.14 mol per diem cube of lactic acid and 0.12 mol per diem cube of sodium lactate. The Ka of lactic acid is 1.4 times 10 to negative 4. All right, we are provided with the equation, right? And now we must answer the following questions, right? A, with reference to the branson lorry theory, explain each of the following weak acid. How do we, what is a weak acid? Explain that. Go ahead. So it's an acid that um, it don't lose all of its hydrogen um, ions, sir. It only donates some of them, sir. Okay. It has a, a weak acid, basically have a low disassociation constant. All right. Well, okay. All right. Anybody else? Anything to add to that? Or any other different perspectives? Go ahead, Joshua. Well, a weak acid is an acid that partially ionizes to give a conjugate base and H plus ions, I believe, yeah. So partially ionizes or partially dissociates. Okay. All right, and a strong acid, no, that would just be the opposite, right? So it would be a strong acid. So it's fully ionized. So it can fully donate its proton to the solution or to a base. Okay. Right? Remember, we must make special reference to Bronson Lorry. Right? So if we just say, okay, a weak acid, right, changes the pH, right, weakly or something like that, or a strong acid changes pH strongly, or a weak acid creates us, um, increases the concentration of protons in solution. Right, um, but compared to the strong acid, strong acid changes the concentration much higher or much strongly. Right, that would all be zero marks. Right, because that is using the Arrhenius principle. What we are asked to use is the Bronson Lorry theory. So we have to mention the donation of the protons, right, and the ionization or dissociation of protons from our acids, and how strongly or how weakly that is done in order to get the marks. So some people might mention hydrogen ion concentration. That's branson Um, That's not really branson but that's Arrhenius, right? But we don't want to give a weak answer. We want to give the best possible answers. So stay as true as possible to the branson theory. All right? B, describe the significance of pH, which is the negative log of the, of the proton concentration, and Ka, which is the acid association constant values. What is the, script, what is this, the significance of these? So what does the pH tell us? <laughs> Go ahead. pH tells us the acidity or alkalinity of a solution. Mm -hmm. But with reference to it, the concentration of protons in solution, can help us figure out whether or not the solution is acidic right or alkaline or basic right depending on that specific value right so the lower the value the more acidic the higher the value the more alkaline right now the ka what is the significance of those values what does ka tell you go ahead sir Sir, it tells you um, if the acid will um, totally disassociate its protons or if it will partially disassociate. Um, I think, hold on, sir, if it's greater than a, never mind that, sir, I don't remember. Okay, that's fine. So it can help us figure out whether or not an acid with the 
strongly dissociate or weakly dissociate. Okay. Anything else the KA can tell us? What does the KA tell us about the strength of the acid? The larger, what is the proportionality? What's the relationship between KA and acid strength? You don't remember the proportionality? The larger the KA, the what? So KA is proportional in some way to acidity. Acid. Okay, this is not going to work out. Like the writing for this acidity. Right? So is it directly proportional to acidity or inversely proportional to acidity? The KA. That's a question for you guys. Go ahead. Go ahead. So I think that um, if the K value is larger, then that means the acid is a strong acid. And if it's lower, then it's a weak acid or it weakly dissociates, something like that. Lovely. So that is exactly what we're talking about. So the Ka is directly proportional to the acidity, right? So the larger the Ka, the stronger the acid. The lower the Ka, the weaker the acid, right? Lovely. Calculate the pH of the buffer solution. How do we calculate the pH of a buffer solution? Which equation shall we use? equation shall we use? Hello? I expecting people just jump up and say, oh, we use this, oh, we use that. That is the answer for that question. Like, just at this point, we're supposed to be going for every answer. So what's the equation? What's the name of the equation? And I'll write the equation. And that gave it away because it has a name. Alright, lovely. So the Henderson Hasselbach equation is what we will use. Right? What is the Henderson Hasselbach equation? What's the Henderson Hasselbach equation? Sir, so, um pH equals PKA plus um PKA plus oh ah sure I forgot plus the logarithm right of the salt concentration salt why are my words looking like that? The salt concentration, give me okay, that square over our acid concentration. Acid. The writing is terrible. I apologize for that. All right, so PKA, blah, 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 blah. All right, so we have that there. Is this equation correct? For a weak acid, it is the pKa plus the logarithm of those concentrations, right? So what we're going to do now, in order to find the pH of the solution, we need to find the pKa. How do we find pKa? We have the Ka of the solution up here to be 1.4 times 10 to the negative 4th power, right? So what would be the pKa? pKa will be the negative log, right, of 1.4 times 10 to the negative 4th power. And then we plug that into our solution. So what's the answer? Go ahead.
right? So we have the PKA there, right? So therefore, it's going to be 3.854 plus log of water concentration of the salt. Was it given to us? Hopefully, it was the concentration of the salt. The lactic acid is that the salt is 0 0.12 moles per dm cube. 0 0.21 rather. Let me check. 0 0.2. Wait, yeah, 0 0.12. There it is. 0 0.12. Alright, so go and move that now. 0 0.12 divided by 0 0.14. And that would be our pH. Alright? Make sense, guys? Yeah, that should be it. So hopefully all that makes sense. All of that makes sense? Okay, so... <clears throat> we're going to add now the log of... 0 0.12 divided by 0 0.14 and our pH is going to be 3.787 that is our pH and that is weakly acidic and that is expected from lactic acid which is a weak acid right um I mean is it weakness it's not a very 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 weak acid but it's a weak acid nonetheless right Stronger acids will tend from 2 towards 0, right? So, with the aid of balance equation, to explain how the lactic acid lactate buffer works to maintain its pH. You guys will be able to do that? Okay, go ahead. Sir, before um, I answer uh, that question, sir. Um, sir, I was told that we could use the ice table and then um, make the hydrogen concentration the subject and then input that value into the negative log hydrogen concentration for the pH. Okay, so... Hmm. Technically, okay, okay, hold on, let me look at it. The thing is, you know, right, for buffers, there's a specific equation which we use for buffers. Like, if it's like an acid or a base or whatever it wants to be, other than a buffer, we could use anything, any other procedure. But we cannot use the Henderson-Hasbach equation. But because we have a base, we have, because we have this um, buffer solution, then we use the equation that is used to find the pH of a buffer, which is the Henderson-Hasbach equation. Technically, if you want to do an ice table and balance it and then do the ex expressions and then plug it in, sure. But I would say personally that knowing this equation is much easier than doing an ice table and figuring out the equilibrium concentration and stuff like that. This is just much easier. Just a PKA plus the log of salt over acid concentration done. Right? So I think this is better, right? And I think this is what you should use for buffer solution. And if you go to higher areas of chemistry and use anything else, you've just lost all your marks. So I would think you would want to use this. All right. So it's just the it's just using the equation that is made for the situation. That's what it is. You can obviously do some mathematical gymnastics to figure out it, but it's better to just use the right equation. All right. So. With the balanced equations that we're having here for the for the lactic acid buffer, right? What we're basically going to be doing is showing our acid neutralizing hydroxides and explaining how that works and then showing go ahead. I think somebody is so sir on one side you have you would have the acid and um water, right, sir? Acid and water, uh -huh. so it's using multiple. On the other side, you'd have the um hydroxonium iron and ion. The um the conjugate base of the acid. 
Would you salt. like to see it? Salt, yeah, the conjugate base of the salt. Well, not the conjugate base of the salt, the conjugate base is the salt, so we don't want to mix, mix, mess it up. Alright. So, okay, sure. so let's draw this, the buffer system. Alright, so this is what we're going to have. Well, it's going to be uh, equilibrium. Right, and as you said, over here we're gonna have hydronium ions. Right, and we're going to have the salt here, right? As you stated correctly. Alright, so that is our buffer system. What we are to do now is to show the the person marking the paper that you know what the equation will look like when hydroxide is added, and you know what the equation will look like when excess protons are added. Go ahead. Sure, so we're supposed to um create another equation. Two more equations. Two more equations? Yeah, it's actually not that bad. <laughs> it's not that bad, honestly. All right. So what basically is going to happen in the first equation, you're going to show that let's say in the first equation we're dealing with add addition of acid. Let's add acid in the first equation, right? So what's gonna happen here is that if we add acid we know that our lactate ion why is my lactate hold on my lactate is wrong i knew it was wrong all right because i was like why my lactate looks so let me fix that all right so negative right we're adding excess protons in the solution and we know that when we, when we do that it's going to give us this that's what happened if we add acid we add acid to it right but if we have add a base to our regular acid that we have up here no if we add base to solution then our acid itself will now neutralize that so we're just writing this this is what i would do right so different persons may provide different answers but this is what makes sense to me for my explanations i'm just writing it out and then explain using the things that i have right so we're gonna have ch O3. This would be the acid here. Um, this would be three negative plus H two O. And this would happen if a base was added. All right. So lovely. So what we're saying now is that we have our overall equation. And then we have one and two. Okay, so what I will do now, it's six marks for explain how this works, right? So the first thing I will do, I will draw out my equation and then say that this is the buffer system set up there, right? The second thing I would do, speak about, let's say that we know that buffers are solutions that strongly opposes drastic changes, right, in any um, pH when small amounts of acids are basically added. So in the first equation, I will now say that when a small amount of acid is added, this is what's going to happen. Equation one will happen, right? So what will happen now? No. If we add acid, we're going to ink. What's going to happen is that we're going to have a neutralization reaction, right? Which will actually push the equilibrium to the left. Hopefully, you can see in equation one what we're creating is our acid, and our acid is on the left side of the equation. So what we're doing is pushing to create more acid, pushing the equilibrium to the left, right? And then in the ad, in the case, I need to fix this. In the case where I have hydroxide, right, in solution now, right, I'm going to be creating more of the acetate, the the salt, so that will push the equilibrium to the right. So let me just put this. The equilibrium will move to the left here, and in this case, the equilibrium will move to the right. So what we're doing is using these equations to explain it. So first of all, you need to know your explanation. You need to be able to write out your explanation, right? What they want you to do is use equations, right, in order to explain that. So basically, what I would do is when I'm explaining what happens when an acid is added, I use equation one, I write that, and then I explain it, right? And how it pushes the equilibrium. And then when I explain how a base is added, now I use equation two and explain how it's pushing the equilibrium, right? I explained um, yesterday and I recorded how buffers work. So if you want a 
complete in-depth explanation of how this buffer will work the videos are posted all right so i would use these equations all right six marks no so it's not known as a small thing you're going to be right you're going to be explaining to them how the buffer will adjust the ph all right and for E, when preparing a buffer solution of a specific pH, state one condition that must be taken into consideration, right, in selecting our suitable weak acid, right? The thing that must be taken into consideration when selecting a weak acid, right, for a buffer solution would most definitely be, what would it be? It must be the Ka. You must take into consideration the Ka of the weak acid, right? So the Ka of the weak acid is important. So once you understand the Ka of the weak acid, right, that can help you set up a proper buffer solution, right? Because the Ka that will determine how much conjugate base is going to be produced, right? And then with that, now you will know the ratios that you would need in order to make an equimolar solution. So it's the Ka of the weak acid that we must be cognizant of which is one mark all right and that is the question 15 marks okay so that is it for the 2000 this 2008 right 2018 paper that's that